Good Catholic girl, she didn't mind the cleaning. All of her household chores, at first, were small and hardly labors one could find demeaning. One's duty was one's refuge, after all. And if she had her doubts at certain moments, and once confessed them to the Father, she was instantly referred to texts in Romans and Peter's first epistle, chapter 3. Years passed, more sinful every day. The seven breakfasts grabbed their pitchforks, donned their horns, and sped to contravene the hopes of heaven, sowing the neighbor's lawn, tares and thorns. She set to work. Pride's hundred looking glasses ogled her dimly, smeared with prints of lips. Lust magazines lay strewn, their tits and asses and flyers for it, devices, chains, cuffs, whips. Gluttony's empties covered half the table, mingling with avarices, cards, and chips. And she'd been told to sew a Bill Blast label in the green blazer Envy'd bought at Gyps. She knelt to the cold master bathroom floor as if a petitioner before the Pope, retrieving several pairs of sloth soiled drawers, a sweat sock, and a cake of hairy soap. Then, as she wiped the Windex from the mirror, she noticed, and the vision made her cry, how much she grayed and paled, and how much clearer festered the bruise of wrath beneath her eyes. No poisoned apple moved for this princess, she murmured, making X's with her thumb. A car door slammed, bringing her to her senses. Ho-hum, ho-hum, it's home from work we come. And she was out the window in a second, in time to see a handsome prince, of course, who, spying her distressed condition, beckoned for her to mount, what else, his snow-white horse. Impeccably he smoked. His smile was so glowing, so debonair, so charming, and so male. She took one step, reversed, and without slowing, beat it to St. Anne's where she took the veil.